All right, so it's been a couple of days since the last video. Don't really remember where I left off, but I buttoned everything back up. As you can see, interior is back together. The cable is ran. I just drilled a hole in the glove box and ran the cable through it. Um, so the next step, once you have your ECU in and everything's all buttoned up like you want, you need to download the software. So you need to head to uh, Tuner Studio's website and download the latest version of Tuner Studio MS. I already have it right here. And then you also need to head over to the Speedy EFI website and then go to the blog section right up here at the top. Boop. And then just scroll down until you find your bass tune. So this is obviously, you know, a, a 1.6. The bass tune and the INI file are here. The 1.8 Miatas, I think it's a little bit further down. But go ahead and grab both of those. There should be two files in it, like I said. And then you should be greeted by a screen similar to this. You're going to need to click Create New Project. And you're going to want to give it a name. I named mine Miata. And then you want to click Other slash Browse. And you need to head to where you downloaded those files. So mine will be in here. I think they should be under Downloads. Yeah, it should be right here. Yep, so you can see it's wanting the, the INI file. So you click that and click Open. So once you've selected your INI file, you click next and skip to this. You just hit next on that. This is where you want to actually connect up. So you go ahead and you plug your port into your computer. Right. And then, so with the key all the way forward, don't obviously start the car, but you can see the keys forward. We're connected up. What you want to do is it's, the manual also says don't hit test. But if you can see, I hit test right here. And it says failed. It's because it needs to be on a different communication port. And this only shows me the one. Which is why I went back and clicked detect. And it worked for me. They said that this doesn't work. But it did for me. If not, you're going to need to go into... I'll wait for this. You can hear Prime already. Yeah. So see, it found my... My speed we know right there. It's on communication. It's on COM port 3. So if I hit next and then next again, you can see it's COM 3 test successful. So that works. If your detect doesn't work, you can just hit next through here. And then under communication, you should be able to go to setting. And you should be able to pick one here. And then you, you're good. So a couple settings you need to mess with, right? First setting, you need to go to tools, calibrate TPS. So with your foot completely off of the throttle, hit get current for, for closed. Then push the throttle all the way to the floor, click get current, click accept, and now your TPS works, right? You can see there's 100, 75, you know, 10, and 0. All right, so once you've got your TPS calibrated, you need to come back up here and you need to go to calibrate temperature sensors. And coolant temperature is what you want to what we want to mess with right now. And we need to select this RX7 underscore CLT stands for coolant S4 S5. And you just click right to controller, right complete. There we go. So we've calibrated our coolant sensor. Come back here, go to calibrate temperature sensor again. Except for this time, we need to click the drop down for sensor table, click air temperature sensor. And then if you're using the IAT sensor that was in the kit, which you should be, just select GM, click right to controller and let it do its thing. All right, you can see the right is complete. So final thing here, come over to settings, go to engine constants. I don't know why they did this, but on this base map, the required fuel table is all sorts of screwed up. So they have engine displacement as 350 cubic inches, which is incorrect. And they have the injector flow at 30 pounds per hour, which is also incorrect. So you need to put in the correct CCs for your engine. If it's a 1.6, it's 1598. If it's a 1.8, it's 1839 or something. And then put in your injector flow in CCs per minute. So a 1.6 injector is 230 CCs a minute. And I believe the 1.8 is 260. So you click OK. This number should be... 11.6 ish close to that you can see i've already done it and now you should be ready to start the engine so pushing the clutch obviously and there you go and that's really all it is so now the engine idles a lot higher 
um, on cold start than it did on the stock ECU. You can change that here if you go to start starting idle and you go to this idle PWM duty cycle. You can adjust how much your like air valve is open by adjusting these dots and that'll bring the idle up and down. So watch, I can drag this one down if it'll let me click on it. There we go. If I drag this down, you can see the idle will drop. See? Um, so you can mess with the idle that way. You're going to need to mess with a lot of these settings to get it to do what you want, but that's it for now. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. So that's all the settings you need to change in Tuner Studio um, to be able to start the car. So once you got this far, I would highly recommend in the top right corner, if you downloaded the regular version, you should see an upgrade button. I would highly suggest spending the 60, 70 bucks and buying the pro version of Tuner Studio uh, because it gets you access to this tab right here, Tune Analyze Live. It's literally a self-tuner. Um, once I started my car and I let it get up to temperature, the warm idle, it would bounce. Bam, 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 probably four or 500 RPM. And I kind of messed with the table, got that maybe down to like 200 RPM bounce, but I still couldn't get it perfect. Um, and so I came in here and I just clicked start auto tune and within two minutes the idle was stabilized. It's, this thing's awesome. I would highly suggest just spending the 60 bucks, 70 bucks and getting the self-learn feature. It's super nice. So that's going to be it for this one. Uh, like I said, in the next video, I'm going to be installing my wideband. Um, then I can really get to tuning because obviously, you know, it's a narrow band sensor. Can't check AFR, so... That's a, obviously the number one thing you need to do to be able to tune an engine. So when that gets here, I'm going to throw it in. I'll show you how to wire that up. It's super simple. And then you can really get started on tuning. So thanks for watching this one. Hope it was somewhat interesting. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.